Okay, roar, rolling. Uh, hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally able to interview my friend that's a wildlife biologist. His name is Chris. So let's just jump right into the interview. First question we have is how long have you been a wildlife biologist? Uh, 15 years now. Okay. Why did you choose to be this career in particular? Well, I grew up in the woods in New York. I grew mm -hmm. up with my grandpa and my dad. And they taught me all about the outdoors and how to live outdoors and the animals and how to respect the environment. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to go in the Air Force and um, thought better of it and decided to go into wildlife. And I got a full scholarship to go to community college and yep, just went from there. Okay. What are some of the things you had to study to become a wildlife biologist? <laughs> what didn't I study? <laughs> uh, analytical chemistry, uh, wildlife biology, of course, uh, mm -hmm. terrestrial ecology, conservation okay, what's that? biology. Terrestrial. terrestrial ecology is study of the animals on the land. Oh, okay. And how they interact with the land and how... Okay, okay. Uh, what was the other thing you said? Uh, conservation biology. Okay. Um, did limnology, study of water quality and uh, quality control. And okay. And how long did it take you to become a wildlife biologist? Eight years. Yeah. Kind of a long time, but not too long. I mean, doctors yeah. have like, what, 20 years or something? Yeah, it would have been uh, longer, but... You just didn't yeah. decide to go for the masters. No. I okay. I got offered a tourist job, so. Okay. And what exactly does a wildlife biologist do? Uh, we try our best to conserve populations and try to bring them back from the point of. Uh, well, some species we bring them back from threatened, some yeah. species we bring them back from extinct. We try to study populations before they get to that point and mm -hmm. see what the trends are so that we know how to conserve them before it becomes an issue. Okay. Like the tortoise, we go out there and we, we study them and see what's going on with their population and we're trying to recover them back to where they should be. Okay, and now for those of the viewers that actually care about the wildlife, like me, for instance, what exactly do you think we can all do to help wildlife in our own areas? Well, to, for one, leave them where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, don't collect from the environment. Mm -hmm. Don't run over the wildlife. Don't <laughs> shoot the wildlife. Don't let your pets go out in the desert because, one, they'll either kill the wildlife out there, or two, they'll bring diseases to the wildlife out there and kill off entire populations. And then there's also the risk of being yeah. bit by a rattlesnake or something poisonous. Yeah. So now, um... And you can create habitat in your yard, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. You just have, out here you have, have the risk of rattlesnake showing mm -hmm. up, so... So now, any real truth to the myth that if you touch a baby bird, the mother will reject it? Like say, I found a baby bird in my yard, and I picked up the baby bird, put it in a strawberry basket, and put that strawberry basket in a tree for mom to come back. Will mom actually reject it, or if it's if you keep playing with it? It all depends on the situation. Okay. Well, I know that there's a lot of... It depends on the species of bird, too. Okay, I know there's a lot of myths about animals and yeah. stuff and I was trying to see if there was a, any truth to that particular rumor. Okay, so now what do, should a person do if they encounter wildlife that can be dangerous? Like I'm walking in say a rainbow basin and a mountain lion comes up to me. Make yourself look as big as you can. Okay. Um, sir, it depends on the type of wildlife. Right. It, you could have black bear. Black bear, if you're going to get attacked, the best thing to do is fight them off. Now, mm -hmm. if you do it that with a grizzly bear, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. The best thing with a grizzly bear is put your hands behind your head and get in the, the cradle position. Right, play and dead. Play dead. Even though it's flipping you, you're still playing dead because if you don't, it's going to kill you. Okay. 
Now, uh, you, uh, can of pepper spray is a good self-defense mechanism. Okay. It's a last resort because by that time they're that close, yeah. Oh, so pepper sprays actually can spray pretty far. Like mine I have, it's a little thing and it sprays like 10 to 12 feet. Mm -hmm. um, although when I start going out for hiking and actually camping more, I want to actually get like bear spray because that stuff comes in a bigger can and it shoots a big puff instead of yeah. just a little string. And also affects the wildlife too. It's the last resort because you don't oh, yeah. want to injure the wildlife. But I don't want to be mauled by yeah, it either. No, but yeah. you keep your distance. You don't encounter it and keep going toward it and so don't say, approach it. So if I see, say, a black bear at some raspberry bushes, I just yeah, don't stay don't play in the raspberry bushes with yeah. it. And, or try to feed yeah. it some chicken. And don't corner it. Because oh, yeah. as soon as you corner an animal or you close it in a fence, as I found out, they <laughs> turn around and try to attack you. Okay. So, what are some of the animals that you've worked with from our specific region here? Uh, golden eagles, bighorn sheep, Desert tortoise mostly, um, uh, desert horn lizards, flat tail horn lizards, uh, French toe lizards, uh, okay. the hobby okay. ground squirrel. Okay. And now, is there any truth to that a lot of the wildlife that we would encounter out here are highly aggressive? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And the best thing to do is to leave them alone and not leave you alone. Okay. There's certain snakes that are more aggressive than others. The best thing to do if you see a snake, don't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Because you know where most people get bit? On the hands. On or the, the face. right hand. Because most people are right handed. Mm -hmm. The number one place people get bit is on the hand. Yeah. Um, I've heard that it's also the facial area because a lot of people they'll be like lying down, say camping or something, and the snake comes in the tent. But generally, yeah, yes, it's it not is as on common the hand. as the in the feet or in the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, that's one of the uh, things that they actually tell you when you're hiking is don't put your hands or your feet in a place that you can't see. And if you so. do get a rattlesnake that bites you. There's don't go trying to kill it because you're going to end up putting yourself at more risk mm -hmm. and for getting bit more. Most people, you have a cell phone on you at all times. Mm -hmm. Step back, take a photo, remain calm, lay down, put your extremity that got bit below your heart but elevated, mm -hmm. and do not use those kits that they give you for rattlesnakes. The ones with the razor blades, you cut yourself with it, it mm -hmm. goes into the tissue, into your tendons, and it all, it makes a, a situation that's bad ten times worse. Now, and is there any truth to that uh, rattlesnakes? I've heard that rattlesnakes, the grown ones that is, that they have the, so with some of them, they have the choice of whether they inject venom in or not. So some of them are a warning bite and it's just a dry bite. Well, there's dry bites, but they'll put out 20% of their venom. Not all bites are dry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could get a dry bite, but the chances of you getting just a dry bite are... Pretty soon. Yeah, it, okay. it, it all depends on what the... It, it's based on the snake. If they're in, a, in an environment where they're always getting attacked, they're going to want to conserve that until they're in dire need of mm -hmm. using that. Right. Okay. Um, and and you were saying if you're a bit not to... Now, should you maybe try to put pressure above the bite? Say, like, I was no, bitten, like, right turn. here. Should I tie off, no, like, right here? No. No. With North American species, unless it's a coral snake, mm -hmm. do not make a tourniquet. Okay. Um... The tourniquet will end up cutting off the circulation to the oh. body, and it'll make uh, so the cardiotoxins of most of the rattlesnakes okay. in the U.S. will inflame that area, and you're most likely to lose that limb if okay. you can tie it off. What about now? If you do like European species with the neurotoxic snakes, that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, putting pressure on it, like wrapping the area with an ace bandage? It's better to leave it alone. Okay. And don't put ice on it. 
just keep the area elevated and below the heart line mm -hmm. and remain calm as hard as that is to do. Yeah. And don't go running around like crazy trying to catch a snake so you can right. show it to the officials. You take a picture of it if mm -hmm. you can. If not, get a really good description of the snake, even draw one out and mm -hmm. get help as soon as possible. If you don't have a phone and you're out in the middle of nowhere, you should have a spot unit or some GPS unit mm -hmm. that lets people know where you are. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is hit the SOS and it'll bring in a chopper or mm -hmm. somebody to help you. Okay. Now, um, with uh, snake bites, some people say that it's a good idea to suck the poison out. Other people say, yeah, no, don't do that. What would you say as a don't professional? Suck it out. Sucking it out is just like cutting the wound. Mm -hmm. It's already in there. It's already, when the snake hits you, it puts the toxins into your skin, into your tissues. So sucking it out isn't going to do anything but inflame your arm that much more. You're going to turn an issue that's solvable into a much bigger issue. Because most of the snake kits have a razor blade. They have the um, the sucking unit, mm -hmm. and they don't do anything. They just okay. make the issue worse. Some of them have like a, a packet of uh, like triple antibiotic that would be good to put on there because okay. if the area starts to uh, corrode, it's, uh, it's good to have that on. Okay, so now there are a couple of other things I've been curious about and I'm sure the viewers, viewers are. Um, scorpions, mm -hmm. when they're dead, I've heard that if like you step on it or it, you touch the stinger, you can actually still be envenomated even though the thing's dead. Yeah, well, if you touch the thing or anything else, you can still get stung. Uh -huh. And, okay. like, snakes, 24 hours after, you know, like, say, for some reason you decide to kill a snake, it can still bite after its head's removed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I do. I did so learn that one. About 24 My hours. dog bit off the head of a rattlesnake that had tried to attack, and the head, the body is over here squirming around, and the head's like moving around in a fighting position. I'm like, oh my God. so okay. So now, is there anything else that you want to add or let the viewers know? Um, for me personally, is to take care of your environment. Mm -hmm. Actually, treat it like you, you want it to look all pretty and stuff, but. You go and drive down the road and toss your garbage out of the car. Yeah. And you run over the wildlife because it was in your way. It was in your way. I've had people in the middle of the road just stop and turn their tires to go run over animals. Oh, that's horrible. And I've I've come up on animals that people shot. I've come up on animals that people have let go in the desert that are water turtles that have no place being out in the desert. And if you're going to be that kind of parent to pet, you shouldn't have animals. Yeah. Okay. And it's just like dogs or okay. anything for that matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for your time. And I'm sure our viewers will be questioning other things. They'll be putting them down in the comments. I'm in contact with him on a pretty regular basis. So if there's anything we didn't cover that you wanted to know about, you can go ahead and put it in the comments and I will ask him about it. And if he is able to answer the question in a safe, detailed way, I'm sure he will be more than happy to share his knowledge. So thanks again for coming and doing the interview and giving our viewers an idea of some things that they can do to stay safe and to help the wildlife as well. There's a lot of kids that watch this and they just, I don't know many kids that don't like animals. Yeah. So, alrighty, well, we gotta fly. See you later.